Uh, again, thank you. I want to thank everyone, spectators. We wouldn't have a parade without spectators. And of course, all the entries that uh, uh, have applied. Um, we're going to see a lot of great floats. The Army uh, and the Army National Guard are going to have uh, some really neat equipment coming down as well. The uh, Lincoln High School Band will also be uh, coming down as well. <clears throat> I also want to thank all the volunteers that have helped out with um, so many things, so many phone calls, uh, getting things organized. The big hand for them, please. Thank you. So my name is Antonio Moreno. I am with the uh, uh, Marine Corps League Cornhusker Detachment that's here in Lincoln. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, we are a, a nonprofit organization helped to uh, the transition of uh, service members, namely Marines and FMF uh, corpsmen and uh, chaplain. Um, we also help with uh, homeless veterans, moving them in with uh, donated furniture, any helping hand that we can give them. Uh, we've also um, uh, spearheaded the uh, Heroes in the Homes uh, program that moved in uh, all those veterans at Victory Park Apartments at the VA uh, campus as well. Thank you. Um, we have several guests here. First up, I want to uh, welcome Mark Peniska former chairman of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. He would like to say a few words. Thank you, Antonio. I want to thank Roy Christensen for the idea of having this uh, parade and Antonio for organizing it. Also, I see the mayor just arrived, so we'll have a speech from him too. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody here and uh, thank you all for coming out. It's a little bit chilly today, but uh, we're all Nebraskans. We're used to that. I just wanted to say uh, I am a Vietnam War veteran from 1969-1970 and I'm also a Native American. Uh, I just wanted to shout out to all the uh, Native Americans served our country in World War II and Vietnam War. Uh, some of them even before they had the right to vote. So thank all you veterans and also all our I want to welcome our World War II and our other veterans that are here. Uh, thank you. I got to take a picture of the 99-year-old veteran here. That was a great honor. 100. Wow. I told Antonio to be brief, so I just I just want to thank all the veterans for their service. Uh, I'm not. I'm 80% disabled, not from exterior, but I was exposed, exposed to Agent Orange. So uh, a lot of us have to deal with a lot of handicaps, uh, mentally and physically. So thank all you veterans. And I, I just want to say that we men and women that come here in service to our country and sacrifice to our country, we do it without any particular color. We do it as, as the colors of American veterans, red, white, and blue. Thank you very much, Mark. The uh, next guest uh, I have here is a, um, a Army veteran that has spearheaded, really, this uh, whole veterans parade. Got uh, started uh, 2016, got the idea in everybody's head got the city council to pass it uh, last year and uh, has helped me out along the way trying to get this Veterans Parade uh, started and going. Uh, this is uh, Councilman Roy Christensen. Thank you, Tony. This is a day about gratitude. And so I'm going to give some people some thanks. The first thanks I want to give is to a dear friend of mine, Doug Evans, who brought this idea to me, said, Roy, you need to make sure Lincoln has a Veterans Day, veterans Parade. So when you see Doug Evans, if you know Doug Evans, contact him and say, thanks, Doug, for planting the seed for this day. I'd like to thank the city staff. 
and the city council members and the mayor for their part in getting us to this point. Special thanks to the Marine Corps League. But this is a day about honoring veterans put on by veterans. And the thanks and the gratitude all go to those who have served in our United States military at one time or another, those who are living, those who are dead. Um, I want to tell just a special little thing today that happened to me when I got here. I met Clarence Osborne. He's our 100-year-old veteran. And in talking to him, I discovered that he had landed on Omaha Beach, uh, uh, D-Day plus two, and he was in the 3rd Armored Division and fought his way across Europe. And I said, well, in the 3rd Armored Division, were you an infantryman or a tanker? And he says, I was an infantryman. And I said, well, what infantry unit were you in? And he was in the 36th Infantry Regiment. And so was I 40 years later. Isn't that fantastic? A 40-year connection with the 3rd Armored Division, the 36th Infantry Regiment. So thank you, veterans. Thank you for all you who serve. Thank you for those who support us now and then and in the future. Thank you, uh, Roy Christensen. And then the uh, next person we have up is also an Army veteran. He has uh, helped out with, and his office has helped out immensely on getting um, giving me resources, advice, everything that I need, help with the application forms. Um, even with the, the mayor's office even helped with the parade posters you've seen around town. So please welcome Mayor Chris Beitler. Thank you. I'm an old army veteran and spent most of my time in the army in Bangkok, Thailand, and it was enormously valuable experience for me both in terms of the people I met and what I learned about our country. Uh, I want to say also what a good thing it was, the manner in which this parade developed. You know, at city government, the city council, the mayor's office, we got a lot of different projects going on that that hopefully you all understand and believe helps with the development of the community in so many different ways. And so somebody has to take uh, focus on and work with different elements of the community to make different things happen. And in this case, it was Roy Christensen on the council who kind of took the lead to uh, on the government side, on the city government side, to see that the full maximum measure of cooperation took place. Because that's how we've been getting things done in Lincoln, cooperation between the nonprofit and the for-profit and, and the government sectors of the city. So I want to thank Roy especially, Doug Evans, and then uh, Outside of government, who really made it happen, of course, was Antonio and the Marine Corps League, the 370th Cornhusker Detachment, uh, the folks who lived the experiences and, and, and whom we're thanking for, for those experiences, for doing the job of protecting the country. So there were a lot of people involved in this, and uh, it's a beautiful thing to see it to see it develop. I might mention quickly that it's that this is not the only thing that's been good for veterans this year. It's been a great year for uh, Lincoln veterans in the sense that their choice uh, for the location of the federal veterans uh, new clinic will be on 70th and and uh, O Street out at the out at the traditional uh, veterans grounds out there. And the construction of that will begin uh, next year. Uh, and so that new clinic is going to be very helpful uh, to everybody involved uh, with the veterans. And then for the veterans who haven't had the best of luck, you know, homelessness has been a problem across the nation. Here in Lincoln, I hope you took note of the fact 
but we now do not have a single homeless veteran in this city. I know you're cold. Let me just mention one last thing. Uh, the Veterans Memorial Garden is one of the most beautiful veterans gardens in the, in the country. Uh, and on November 11th, there will be a ceremony there that's always moving. And so I wanted to mention that to you as an additional opportunity to say thank you to the veterans. With that, I just wanted to mention one last thing to you, and it's a quote by Abraham Lincoln uh, in his second inaugural address, and I wanted to be sure I got it right. But he said, uh, and he called upon the nation at that time to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. And that famous line is the motto of the Veterans Administration. Today, of course, it's applied to both men and women who have served the nation with honor. And although Lincoln's words were, were given at the time of the Civil War, it's something that we need to remember. We needed to remember then, we need to remember now, and we need to remember always in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Gaspitler. I uh, hear the band coming, so the parade is starting soon. Uh, just a final note that this is 100 years since the Armistice Treaty that officially ended World War I, and that's a big, uh, big year for us. Also a big year is uh, for the Marine Corps. This is 100 years of women enlisting in the Marine Corps. And also, thank you. In addition, it is also 100 years since the Battle of Belle Wood in France, where the Marines got their name, Devil Dog. Ah! Thank you and enjoy the uh, parade. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the first Veterans Day celebration here in Lincoln. Going by us right now is our Grand Marshal, Reno Bamford, who was born in 1950 at a Naval Hospital in Coronado, California. Raised on a farm in central Nebraska, he attended Kearney State College, where he received his Bachelor of Science degree in Biology and joined the Marine Corps. He is a platoon leader's course program in 1970 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant upon his graduation. Reno Bamford, our Grand Marshal for our parade today. Lincoln Public Schools and the Lincoln Catholic School support our veterans and re representing us today are members of the Lincoln High Lynx Marching Band.
Let's give a hand to the Nebraska National Guard now coming through. The National Guard, the guard, of course, who uh, keeps us safe and travels around the world to help out others, the Nebraska National Guard. The Rough Riders Motorcycle Group is a non-profit organization based in Lincoln, Nebraska. This group of bikers are men dedicated to brotherhood, fellowship, safety, supporting our community, and helping local individuals and charities. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Our next entry is by the Cornhusker Model A Ford Club. That club has about 75 members who are interested in the preservation of Model A Fords. About 5 million Model A's were produced in 1928 to 1931, and those appearing in today's parade are just a few of the many that are still driven today. Let's hear it for the Cornhusker Model A Ford Club. Model A's, of course, remain one of the most popular, collectible, and restorable cars in America. Some of the cars owned by the members of the Cornhusker Club have been restored by the members themselves. This club has been in existence since 1959. Each year, the members display their cars at multiple retirement homes in the Lincoln area. Many of the retirement home residents enjoy seeing and talking about the cars, and the club also participates in several area parades. Let's hear it again for those Model A Auga, the car horns. Up next, we have the Veterans Memorial Garden. It's located in historic Antelope Park. And a visit to the site will take you on a walking tour of 25 military monuments, which serve as a permanent reminder of the sacrifices men and women have made to preserve our freedom. Individual bricks engraved with the name of a veteran are donated by family and friends. Each year, patriotic programs are presented on Memorial Day, Bricks of Honor Dedication Day, that's the second Saturday in June, Patriot Day, Veterans Day, and Pearl Harbor Observance Day. Veterans Memorial Garden is a place of solemn beauty which allows for peaceful reflection. Next, it looks like we have the Cornhusker Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts. Let's give a big hand to these young people who we see going throughout our community many times. Popcorn, cookies, a wealth of education, molding the future men and women of our community, Cornhusker Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Next, we have the golf, golf cart here to honor and thank all veterans who have served our country. Grew up in a family of World War II veterans, and uh, they taught us what the flag and the country stands for. Their stories of service to our country have helped us understand how fortunate we are. 
This is for recognition to all the World War II veterans who are still with us today. Let's give a big hand to all the World War II veterans still with us today. This is the Eagles Rock and Road Show vehicle from Lincoln's only Classic Rock 92.9 The Eagle. Lincoln's Classic Rock Morning Show and home of Scott K's Basement Tapes, The 10 at 10, Stairway to 7 and more. Friday, November 9th, join the Eagle at Super Saver at 48th and O for their 17th annual Combat Hunger Food Drive for the Veterans Food Pantry serving the Lincoln Food Bank. You can donate right now by going to ktlg.com now. ktgl.com now to donate to combat hunger. And please put your hands together for the Nebraska Hearts Institute doing some great things here in Lincoln. And of course, coming up now, Lincoln's Junior ROTC. Let's give a big hand to these young people. Lincoln's Junior ROTC participating in our veteran celebration today. Thank you so much for coming out and for all you do. Our next entry is Lincoln Quilts of Valor, Nebraska, number 556. The mission of the Quilts of Valor Foundation is to cover service members and veterans touched by war regardless of the conflict, declared war or otherwise, in which they served with comforting and he healing quilts of honor. The quilts are stitched by a group of members to serve as tokens of appreciation that unequivocally say, thank you for your service and valor. Alpha Media, Lincoln's 12 in a row new country, Kix 96.9, home of J.P. Lauren and Husker Nick Mornings. Wave to Liz and Coriel and join them Monday for more free Eric Church tickets. Lincoln's 12 in a row, KZKX, Kix 96.9. Passing by is Mr. Kerwin Overy, World War II Navy veteran, who was aboard the USS Bismarck Sea, a baby flat top aircraft carrier when she was sunk by the Japanese kamikaze pilots back in 1945. Mr. Kerwin Overy, World War II Navy veteran. And put your hands together for the Lincoln Vet Center. They're located at 3119 O Street in Lincoln. It's operated by Ken Colson, uh, veteran outreach program specialist, and Jason Walters is the office manager. The veteran staff are people in the VA who welcome home war veterans in honor by providing quality readjustment counseling in a caring manner. Next, Freemason, Freemasons in Motion, Family Values, Integrity, Tradition, and Service. 
Grand Lodge of Nebraska, the Freemasons in motion. This is the 1011 Weather Shield, shielding you when severe weather strikes, taking live weather coverage to the next level. 1011 and the 1011 Weather Shield keeps you ahead of the storm and brings you the view from the ground as it happens. The 1011 Weather Shield, along with Lincoln's most experienced weather team, the 1011 Weather Team, the team to trust what matters most. And please make welcome American Legion Post 294. Let's give them a nice round of applause. The International Association of Sheet Metal, Air, Rail, and Transportation Workers Union is proud to participate in the 2018 Lincoln Veterans Day Parade. Our members are located across Nebraska. We represent approximately 2,000 members in nine locals. The largest local is Local 305, located right here in Lincoln. Smart TD represents members working on the BNSF, Union Pacific, and the Nebraska Central here in Nebraska. These members include people working as switch persons, conductors, hostlers, engineers. We are the folks that make the rail yards go. And a little reminder for everyone to get out and vote. It says we love you veterans, be a voter. Absolutely. A reminder too about the Veterans Day Open House. Uh, the YMCA of Lincoln invites all veterans and members of our armed forces and their immediate families to try the Y for free November 11th and 12th in honor of Veterans Day. Up next, we have the Smart Car Club. Up next, we have the American Legion, Post 3, Lincoln, Nebraska. The purpose of the float is to commemorate the 100th birthday of the American Legion and to celebrate the 100 years of service. The four pillars of the American Legion are signified on the float. Americanism, Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation, National Security, and Children and Youth. The four emblems of the American Legion family pictured on the float help cement the bond between the American Legion, the American Legion Auxiliary, Sons of the American Legion, and the American Legion Riders. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Next up, we have the VFW Post 3606 and the 3606 Auxiliary, the largest post in Lincoln with over 350 members of the post and is located at 3340 West A Street, serves the best $12 steak dinners in town on the second and fourth Saturday nights of the month from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can follow them on Facebook at VFW3606.com. VFW Post 3606 and the 3606 Auxiliary. This 1972 Buick LeSabre convertible is one of uh, 2,400 made in 72. The majority of these cars had black tops, 44 had white tops. The convertible, convertible is all original except for the crater wheels and tires.
American Legion Riders. They are part of the nation's largest wartime veteran service organization, members of the American Legion family, Legionnaires, sons, and auxiliary members who have joined together to ride motorcycles for fun and fellowship and to remember and to dedicate themselves to the original purpose. And coming up next are the Lincoln Squires Wrestling Club. It's a youth wrestling club that practices out of Nebraska Wesleyan University. It's open to kids pre-kindergarten to eighth grade, helping create good wrestlers and great people for the kids by the kids. Let's hear it for our Marine Corps representatives. And let's hear it for the Devil Dogs celebrating 100 years of women Marines. <laughs> 